do buckaroos welcome back to the channel I just wanted to make a short video for you guys today about my FN intake manifold I kind of mentioned it on the last video SVIN and FVIN I don't know if you guys know the difference exactly but SVIN is for half ton trucks and California models because the SVIN indicates EGR FVIN indicates non EGR which was three quarter ton one ton trucks non-California all that stuff so I am of course running an FVIN being it's a competition vehicle a lot more free-flowing things like that um, if you guys noticed in the last video the turbo video you could see the standpipe sticking up in the middle of the intake manifold that was the EGR port and the EGR valve sits on top of your upper intake and everything's different and it's just a lot less flowing so of course we are running the F in and I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through I mentioned I was porting it and cleaning it up I'm gonna show that to you guys right now so I'm gonna get the camera flipped around and we will take a look at that all right here we are it's kind of a mess there we go but this side I've already got about 99% done just kind of gonna polish this up a little bit but it's all ported out just nice and shiny free flowing there's still some garbage in there but once I clean it up it'll be a lot more obvious it's just dirty you can kind of see the smear there that's just from my finger rubbing right here just kind of feeling everything um, it's a lot smoother than the camera portrays it like you can't snag a finger on here nothing and that's due to the bits I'm using this um, carbide burr which I started out with the non-ferrous burr, which is for aluminum brass, things like that, um, non-steel. But and then I'm finishing it up with this steel bit because it's a lot finer. You can see real small fine teeth. So that's what I'm using to, on this side currently, you can see there's plenty of metal in there. But that's what I'm using to get the sides cleaned up real nice after I roughed it in with the um, the non-ferrous burr bit. And as you can see, I haven't done this side yet, and it's really chipped out, kind of looks scaly like a fish. You can see this one I've kind of worked on a little bit. And you kind of go down further and smoother, smoother. And I will end up hitting these with a sander just to smooth them out all the way and like I said polish them up a little bit but this side is kind of in progress you can even see this side is a little bit smoother compared to that right there and that's just using the two different bits but it's kind of hard to tell how much I've done due to I've already roughed in all four of these cylinders which actually I can go grab that SVIN intake and I can show you differences in port sizes which actually let me go do that real quick okay so I have both the FVIN and the SVIN EGR intake sitting here and you can tell just by looking at those two you can tell a big difference on this left one compared to the factory port here on the right side huge difference and of course it's like that on all four cylinders and if you actually go back to the video I showed of my cylinder heads, I will show you basically how much bigger this port will be because this matches, this is the same gasket I used to mark out on my cylinder heads. So that will show you how big of a difference it made as well, what it looked like compared to stock and everything like that. I also compared the stock cylinder head versus a the ported cylinder head on the last one. So. You got that here and this here. Sorry about the noise, guys. Uh, another worker here just fired up a pickup, so if you guys are having a hard time hearing me, I apologize, but now that I kind of showed you guys port differences, I'm gonna flip these over and I will show you what the EGR looked like on this one opposed to this one, which you can see on this one, this is a solid. There's not a hole here. That's just from the ports in your cylinder head. This blocks them off. If you look here, there's a port here and here run through this channel under the intake. 
And like I said, the EJR ports are built into every cylinder head. Just, you have the FVIN, this is an FVIN intake gasket that blocks off the hole. And the FVIN intake itself also blocks off the hole. So the gaskets are cross compatible. If you um, have this, this will block off the port. Or the intake itself will block off the port, either way. But let me get these flipped over. And as you can see, a huge difference. So of course, FVIN, free flowing, no EGR port. But you can see in here, through the center, that's your EGR. See it right there? Not right here, all open. And then here's your EGR port. Runs in under that channel I showed you on the bottom that comes through inside here, both sides. Again, no port right here. Port right here. Comes in. They both meet here. And you have a gasket that sits on top of here. And your upper intake goes on. And again, the F VIN and S VIN upper intakes are different as well because the F VIN has um, no EGR valve on top so it's just a big open comes up and over which would actually be this way go like this and it comes over to your turbo right about here this one the SVIN again same thing comes up and over like this to your turbo but it has a port in the top for the EGR valve and in the bottom of the S-VIN, there's two ports. It has a similar channel to this on the S-VIN that runs in your upper intake with two openings so that when your EGR valve opens, it lets exhaust come from in this port through your upper and down in. And that's how the EGR system works on these. And it, of course, is ran off vacuum and a couple solenoids. But that is a huge difference between just being this big, wide-open Mamu here and then you have all this impeding flow. Um, it's heavier, which that usually doesn't make a difference on normal people's trucks, but mine, every ounce I could save helps, which all this is weight savings here too, boys. But we're not focused on that. I'm more focused on making power and making efficient power because every engine's an air pump, of course, so faster you, and more efficient you could get air in, the faster and more efficient you can get air out, the better. This is not efficient. Nice, smooth, free-flowing. Efficient. So that is the big difference. A side-by-side -side comparison between a F-VIN and an S-VIN intake. And, of course, showing you guys the ports, things like that, the differences, which... I can refresh that again, and we'll go to this side without the gasket bolted on. And that just puts it in big perspective again right there. This little guy, my f it's about as wide as my finger. There's that. And that big difference I know it's kind of a crude measurement using my finger but that just shows you the big difference in port size and it's just smoothed out around the radiuses a lot more free flowing into the heads and that's you the intake really isn't as important as port matching your exhaust because this flows into the bigger cylinder head hole but of course anytime you can open it up just get more air in smoother again with all the radiusing making all my my turns radiuses another word to say it my turns coming in here and making them smoother and more free flowing that's always going to help especially cramming a bunch of boost into this thing with that big S475 right there you can see the difference between the two ports huge difference huge difference but yeah I just wanted to kind of show you guys I know I talked about it in the last video about um, I had the S of N intake on the engine because I was using it for mock-up purposes and things like that but I figured I'd show you guys what I was doing with the F of N intake and 
the differences, why I'm choosing FVN, things like that. Um, but it is very close, like I, like you guys seen. I just need to clean up those last couple ports, polish everything up. I'm gonna go throw it in the parts washer, get it all nice and clean, make sure all the metal shavings are out of it. I'm gonna end up sandblasting it in our blast cabinet, make sure it's nice, pretty. We're gonna slap it on, and then we can start building that new upper intake manifold I was talking about. Get the turbo on, and we can start fabbing turbo piping. Of course, I have to mount the upper inner, or I don't know why I said upper, well, upper intake, mount the inner cooler, get brackets made for that then I can start turbo piping start getting all that done get it ready to fire up boys but I just wanted to show you guys this that way I could update on the last video I'm trying I'm really trying to be better about posting more updates and more videos for you guys so I figured this one would be a good one just to show some side-by-side -side comparisons what I was working on and show you guys it's just one more step closer to hear in the noise ready for the party so thanks for watching guys like share subscribe comment all that good stuff tell all your friends to do it i really am appreciating it the subscribers are going up little by little every day and i'm i'm loving it and that's why i'm trying to make more videos for you guys more updates and i promise you there's gonna be a lot more cool content coming soon between the race truck the tow rig be ready for updates on that soon. And the daily, the 2005 LLY Duramax. There's a lot of cool stuff coming for that truck soon too. So stay tuned guys. Hit that bell so you get notified every time a new video is posted. And thanks for watching guys. I will catch you on the next one.